Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today to discuss a day in the life of a field service manager. Dashboards are my co-pilot. Service Max and Pitney Bowles have a really great presentation for you today and we want to ensure all your questions get answered so please feel free to submit them as we go along as we'll stop for Q&A at the end. In case you were wondering, we will also be sending you the final webinar recording and slide deck. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce you to Vidya Chitanga, Director of Product Marketing from ServiceMax. Thank you. Welcome everyone. My name is Vidya Chitanga and I am super excited to be co-presenting on this webinar with Mark King from Pitney Bowes. Um, the, the title of the webinar, of course, is about uh, is around dashboards and, uh, and reports. Uh, the agenda for today uh, is, is twofold. It is to talk, uh, I, I, my role, by the way, is going to be very small. I uh, didn't want this to be a vendor-based pitch, but more for you guys to hear from one of our customers as to how they use uh, our solution. But at the get-go, I'll just talk about the business challenges, um, some of uh, what better data and how that leads to better decisions, uh, the role of reports and dashboards, and then to turn it over to Mark King, who is going to take the bulk of the, the time on this webinar to talk about a whole bunch of things, including why he uses ServiceMax on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, to give you an exhaustive uh, demo of uh, uh, the reports and dashboards that Pitney Bowes has in the service organization today. Next slide, please. So it's, it's, it's no surprise that field service management and, um, uh, you know, okay, thank you. Uh, so it's no surprise that field service management faces many challenges today. I mean, you guys are living a day and night, right? On one hand, you've got a service that is commoditized. So, you know, the customer demands and expectations are high. On the other hand, you've got the pressure to bolster service-related revenue, to keep service costs down, uh, to, uh, to uh, in, improve customer satisfaction, and so on. Now, just add to the mix how much of meaningless data you've got. Service data is pouring in from everywhere, right? You've got your customer data, you've got your field technician personnel data, you've got um, internal business operations data, and then on the other hand, you've got products and parts and pricing data. I mean, data is everywhere. Obviously, some of them are real time and some of them are more standard. But no field service manager or director or executive or any of us um, on the call can humanly process all this information, you know, real time and in flavors needed by various audiences. So you obviously need real time actionable insights. That's a big challenge. Um, you need to look forward into the future and not just get into this catch-up game of looking at data in the past. And, and, and lastly, you know, the one thing that is certain in, in any business is change. <laughs> I feel like Obama talking, but, um, you know, your business processes, they change. Your business needs change. Um, the, the executive asks change. Now, reflecting this change, on your insights are still, so that your insights are still meaningful is a big challenge. Mark, next slide please. And obviously, we don't need um, people to tell us, but Aberdeen did a survey and it shows that better data leads to better decisions. 91% of service executives who took the survey said they believe access to timely and accurate data is so critical for operational and financial performance. Uh, in, in their organization, in their business. And some of the best-in-class service organizations use better data uh, in order to improve their customer retention numbers. I mean, it's close to 33% increase in customer retention just by having uh, made better decisions, and 21% increase in service revenue. These are big numbers. I mean, think about your service revenue and think about a 21% increase in service revenue, all because you have timely access and visibility to the right data. Next slide, please. So this is a famous quote from um, Winston Churchill, and it's not just appropriate for planning um, fanatics like me, but also so relevant for field service. You know your field service automation uh, software that you bought from one of the vendors is going to spew out all this data and information. 
So why not plan around it? Why, why not think about it already and say, okay, these are the reports and dashboards I'll need to, to assess the health of my business on a daily basis, on an ongoing basis, quarterly basis. This is what I would need for the executive guys who would sit above me in the chain, folks who, who work for me so I can better run my business and so on. Uh, go to the next slide, please. And reports and dashboards are, um, uh, can, can come handy in numerous ways, right? Depending on who you are and what role you play in the field service organization, you can pull information that's relevant for you. Um, Mark obviously has a lot to share on this in the next few minutes, but in a nutshell, right, reports and dashboards help you digest large amounts of data in a very, in a, in a simple, meaningful way. Management obviously gets to monitor key performance indicators and metrics uh, throughout the service business. You can add, you can change what metrics you want to, um, you want to monitor and measure. It's one version of truth. I mean, one, one central repository that shows you what's happening across the board. And you can, I mean, Mark is going to show this to you, but, but really just being able to do this multi-dimensional analysis and being able to see stuff side by side uh, to be able to answer a, a complicated question by just pulling up a few graphs, which is so uh, intuitive and simple, makes a lot of difference. The last bullet for me is super key, which is to be able to change stuff. I mean, um, imagine one of your, your employees uh, leave, and if you have to spend uh, time and money to go and change uh, the parameters in order to reflect that on your reports and dashboards, that's not helping. So you need uh, the right kind of software to be able to help you do this faster. Next slide, please. Uh, this is this is just me trying to give you guys an example of some of the common field service dashboards. You may recognize stuff that you already have in your business today. Uh, some of you may be smiling at them saying, oh yeah, I have a spreadsheet for this. I know how difficult it is. I lock myself up in a room for three days and I come out and I have one report ready in an Excel. Boom, some data changes and I have to go back into my shell to redo it uh, so it makes sense to present to be presented on Monday morning or something. Anyway, um, just to call out a couple of these examples, um, I love this. This is efficiency in queuing to assignment. So when when the work orders actually get queued to when it gets assigned, then you can run a report for efficiency in assignment to scheduling. Right. So it goes from uh, you can take little chunks of it, and then from scheduling to closure. So. That's just an example of how you can break up a business process and, and, and go and um, look through a microscope to see where exactly things are and uh, do a health check of, um, of your business. So next slide, please. And I think um, I just wanted to say this is, this is at the highest level. I have another slide in the end after Mark's presentation talking about the modules. But ServiceMax helps customers uh, provide flawless field service to their customers and thereby delight them in the process. We have an end-to-end -end solution starting with contracts and scheduling, detailed parts, social, portals, dashboards, reports, all this on any mobile device of your choice and so on. Next slide, please. And we have um, hundreds of customers across the world, uh, one of whom is here with us, uh, Pitney Bowes. And this is perfect segue to introduce Mark King, who is uh, the National Service Manager at Pitney Bowes. Mark, I am so excited to have you here. Um, all of us are uh, psyched to hear you um, present. Over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vidya. Uh, good morning. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Mark King. I'm the National Service Manager for the UK for Pitney Bowes. Um, I'm responsible for the service delivery and I'm responsible for 80 field-based engineers and for area service managers. Um, my presentation is in, in three sections. The, the first piece is I just want to give you an overview of Pitney Bowes. Um, the second piece is uh, why I use Service Max, and the third piece is is for me probably the most um, important piece, and that's to show you my dashboards um, in a live environment. So, Pitney Bowes. Um, 
Pindy Bowes was founded in 1920. Uh, we invented the Frankie machine where our founders, Arthur Pitney and Walter Bowes, instilled an innovation culture in the company. Over the years, we've gained over 3,000 patents, allowing our solutions to bring greater efficiency and automation to business communication. Pitney Bowes is a technology provider for small, medium and large organizations. We connect with our customers to build loyalty and help them grow. An example of a patent innovation is the transactional QR code which will be posted in 2003 and we all see that every day. We see it in posters, we see it on the back of buses and you can actually see it on my screen with the round circle which, uh, with, a, with a small barcode. We are original Fortune, original Fortune 500 company where we were listed in 1957. Our world headquarters is in Stanford in Connecticut and that's about half an hour away from New York. We have a combination of direct and indirect locations in 120 countries where we employ 27,000 staff worldwide. Our location intelligence software has allowed us to work with Facebook where Pitney Bowes best of breed technology allows Pit Facebook to offer globally. It uses location intelligence and I'm sure many of you use Facebook to keep in touch with friends and family and also those people who have become your friends on Facebook who you actually don't know. Users of eBay and PayPal too will enjoy Pitney Bowes innovations. We provide them with a complete browser based online postage solution that gives customers quick and easy access to shipping services. On top of what we deliver, more than 30 billion items are post securely and safely. With the mail or digital channels, we help our clients generate revenue through making business communications more professional, targeted and engaging. And you can learn more about Pitney Bowes at www.pb.com. So, Pitney Bowes and ServiceMax, the implementation. So, first of all, it was business led. Um, it wasn't just uh, a service department wanting a, a different platform. Um, Pitney Bowes, as a business, decided to, to, to move into a, a different platform. And we have, at the moment, 980 users across seven countries and we have 850 field site technicians using ServiceMax. It's a mobile solution, it's cloud based. Um, wherever you are, wherever you've got 3G or Wi-Fi, you can actually get into ServiceMax and start using it. Um, all my managers carry iPads and uh, within the, the Apple Store there is actually a ServiceMax app um, that my guys and myself use and it, it automatically gives us our dashboards on the front screen of our iPad. It also supports our customers. Pitney Bowes has three main customers. It has the SMB segment, as I spoke about earlier, has our enterprise customers, and also our public sector customers. And it also interfaces with Pitney Bowes' main uh, platform, which is, which is SAP. And then after all that, in a nutshell, is it's to support our customers and our clients. You know, they are the most important people. Um, and it also helps the call center who use ServiceMax to dispatch those calls to the engineers. So why did we go to ServiceMax? Um, we had um, various platforms in various countries um, throughout Europe. There was different reports, there were different challenges and we had no comparison to each other. So the you know, UK was using one system, France was using another and as Vidya said earlier, you know, I was locked away in a darkened room with Excel, tr trying to understand what my productivity of, of my engineers was. And, and my colleague in France did exactly the same thing. So we decided um, that we wanted to go to just one platform. Um, so we've all gone across Europe for ServiceMax. Now, my next slide, um, I just want to talk about the difference in the, in the two systems, um, ServiceMax and, and, and my previous system. So when my boss gave me a little shiny box with a red bow on it and inside was ServiceMax, what was my first impressions? I had instant reporting at my fingertips, which I've never had before. I knew what was happening now. I understood what my resource was today. I used ServiceMax as a temperature gauge that gives me that, that warm, comfortable feeling that I know what's going on um, in in the UK for me and across Europe for, for my colleagues. And it's a management tool. It's not a managers having to go through different systems, different Excel spreadsheets. It's a tool that gives the 
the managers the tool to manage their engineers. Hence, my guys have the iPad. They don't need to be connected via their laptop. And it's also full exposure. It's very, very visible. Um, you'll see later on my dashboards are open. Um, so anyone who's got a license can go into my dashboards and start looking at some of the data. And you will get questions from people who don't necessarily understand the data behind it. But it's, it's a very good um, visible uh, platform. So what was my last impressions of, of the previous system? Uh, you can see a rear view mirror there because um, that's what it was like. I was always looking over my shoulder. What went on yesterday? What went on last month? What went on you know, last quarter? I didn't really know. Um, you get what you was given. Um, so that was the system. It was uh, off the shelf. So therefore, we had to use it. And if anything changed, so a uh, video mentioned earlier, you know, if, uh, if a manager um, leaves or joins, that was an IT change request, and, and genuinely speaking, you know, that's a few hundred dollars and euros to get that done, and it might take six to eight weeks if you're lucky. I didn't know who I had off sick any given one day. I had to make a phone call, um, and the worst bit was it was the customer who was ringing in going, where's my engineer? We would chase the engineer, and we found, off, you know, found out he was off sick or he was training. Um, again, you know, what happened last month? I was always looking behind me, not forward. And I, and I wanted some changes, um, and I wanted them as soon as possible. And like in any service organization, you know, we're very, very reactive. We have to react to our customers. And the stock answer was, I don't know, couldn't really explain it, which can be slightly embarrassing. So why I use ServiceMax? I'm just going to give you my top six um, reasons and what I use it for. In the next couple of slides, we'll go into more detail. So I use it to maximize my revenue. I use it for operational efficiencies. Very important. It gives our customers experience. Um, we use um, a Chatter Service Pulse to, to communicate. And I use uh, what I call a tech comparison report, which I can, I can talk to you about in the next slide. And also, I use it for trending. So what can ServiceMax offer me? Maximizing my revenue. What ServiceMax does, it ensures that the engineer charges the customer correctly. Um, when they receive the call on their iPad, it's very clear what is covered under a contract or what is chargeable, whether that's travel, labor or parts and it also captures um, the front agent so if the front agent decides that they actually want to recommend that we go out free of charge to a customer who's chargeable we know about it we get a flag and we get an email and then we can try to drill in and understand why we want to give that revenue away in some cases it's correct you know the customers had a few issues um, they don't want to be charged again so we can have that visibility, and you can start to see that in, in some of my dashboards. So the operational efficiencies, you know, it's very accurate reporting. Um, the system um, doesn't allow an engineer to travel backwards. Now, the system we used before did. The, it was a handheld device that if the engineer dropped it and it reverted back to last month and he didn't check the time, when he went into transit, it said that he traveled three months, a month ago. Service Max and, and the iPad doesn't allow that to happen. It also gives me the average repair, install, maintenance, and travel time by product. So when you look at high-end uh, machines, the average repair time is obviously going to be a little bit longer than a, a smaller machine. It also helps us understand what goes on in different countries. So you can have um, a direct comparison with Europe. So, you know, the UK will be compared to France, to Central, to the Nordics. And, you know, you can have a little bit of competition going on. And, and questions can be asked. You know, this European service director can ask the question, what, why does it take France longer to repair a certain product than it does the UK? And it also supports utilization. So it helps us understand what an engineer does um, in their working day. For the customer experience, it captures missed um, SLA, so it, it, it captures the response time. So a customer who has a four-hour contract, for example, um, if the engineer gets there at four hours, five minutes, we know about it. 
um, because the iPad is, is very clever, very cute, that it knows when we've missed their SLA. And it also reports on the engineer making contact. Within Pitney Bowes, um, there's a business rule that when a call is automatically dispatched to the engineer, he, must, he or she must acknowledge that call within a certain time frame depending on the contract. And they must phone ahead to the customer to give the customer an ETA. Um, as you, you know, I don't have to tell you guys on, on the phone. It's, you know, I put myself in a, in the customer's shoes. Um, any any engineers are going to come round if, uh, you know, if you've got a problem with your gas, your electricity. You want to know when he's going to turn up. So what Service Max does is there's a button on the iPad that the engineer has to slide over, and again, you can report on that. What else does Service Max offer? Um, trending. Um, it tracks performance. So it not only tells you um, what's gone on uh, previously, um, it can tell you what's going to go ahead regarding sickness, training, um, you know, long-term sick people. You can actually plot them in. Um, it sounds a bit funny that people try to book sick in advance, but you know, when you have long-term sick people, you can actually see that and trend that in, in a graph. And it also helps us to resource and, and, and plan our work. The technician comparison report, um, it starts to report on engineers as an individual. It also captures how accurate they are at reporting. Um, again, within ServiceMax, we allow an engineer 95 to 105% reporting time of their day. If they're reporting 70% or 60%, then we, we get to know about that and we can ask those questions. Again, if we've got engineers who are reporting 110, 115%, we need to understand, is, is that because they're driving more, they've got more jobs, they're more busy, is their area getting bigger? So you can start to use those as trigger points and you can use those as a temperature gauge. It offers a utilization by individual depending on the skill set. So we've moved away from measuring uh, engineers on how many visits or how many jobs a day they do. You know, the, the standard that everyone talks about depending on obviously the, the company's four, four jobs a day. But you know, if you've got an engineer who's installing a large machine for two days, he's never going to do four a day. What ServiceMax does, it gives you the percentage, so it tells you how long that, that engineer has spent traveling, how long they've spent in front of a customer, um, how long they've spent doing demo or um, workshop repairs. Whatever is in ServiceMax, you can report on it. And it also delivers uh, an over, overall view of what an engineer does. So you can start to stack rank some of the engineers, and some of the engineers um, don't like it. Um, the ones generally at the bottom, the ones who love it, are generally the ones at the top. And then uh, the, the final bit for this this slide is um, is about chatter and service pulse. Service Max offers this, and I and I, um, I compare it to a similar between Facebook and Chatter. And what this does, it, it stores comments and data. It also offers a, a, a large, wider community. So, for example, if there's a if there's an update in Service Max, or there's a tech technical update, we can post that on Chatter, and every engineer in Europe can get hold of that. And they can download it onto their iPad, and it's stored. And it gets us away from the uh, the email etiquette that everybody. Um, is unfortunately into, and it stops that big button in the middle of your of your email called reply to all. You know, with Chatter, you can start to post stuff on there. You can have closed groups, um, and the good thing about Service Max on that on the Service Pulse Chatter system is, if you've got an idea, you can post it. Someone from Service Max will take that idea, they will start to look at it, and then they'll come back and say, yes, it can be done or it can be done, but it needs, it needs to have you know, certain enhancements. So that's, that's why I use ServiceMax, and um, I, I'd like to now go on to the live demo. Uh, what I want to show you is some of my reports, um, some of my high-level dashboards, and some of the trending information um, that, that I use. Now, you know, this is live, um, so... Um, Bear with me, please. Okay, so this is what Service Max dashboard looks like. It's, uh, as I said, it's it's, it's cloud-based. Um, I use Google Chrome, and you can see here, Service Max is up there, and it actually sits on 
the, the Salesforce platform. I built these dashboards myself um, purely so I understand the data behind it. The worst thing, for, in my opinion, is for someone to give you your dashboard um, because you, you need to understand what it's telling you. It's a bit like presenting someone else's slides. So if I just quickly just go through um, and uh, show you some of my dashboards. So this is my operational dashboard. As you can see, there's, there's, there is many graphs on there, but what I use every single morning, and I've refreshed it. Last time I refreshed this dashboard was at uh, 20 to 5 uh, UK time. Is I use this graph here, national leave today. So that tells me how many engineers I've got off today. And as you can see, there's 14 on holiday, and there's two um, who are off sick. I've got nobody training. If training was on there, it would be showing a small orange segment. So when you go into the report, and while it's doing that, you know, I can show you just, just some of those graphs on there. As you can see, I've got quite a few graphs going on there, just purely for operational. Okay, while it's doing that, I'll show you another. This one here, oh, apologies for that, there you go. It's now put us into the report. So what it's telling me is it's telling me today, it's telling me my engineers, it tells me their manager, it tells me in the United Kingdom. So there's the engineers who are training, sorry, who are on holiday and who are actually on, uh, on, on sick leave. So if we go back to the operational dashboard, this one here, mean time to repair. So it's an average repair time for all my products down here. So you can start to do a comparison um, with different managers, different engineers, and, and different countries. And this is in decimal. So for example, this product here um, is that took on average 1.71 hours to repair that. And that's based on the data that the engineer puts in. And then you can start to have a look at what's going on within that certain, um, that certain model. My next dashboard, again, it's, it's called resource planning. Um, again, it's, it's built on Salesforce. And for example, here, this is how many visits all the engineers do by a manager. And you can see that this individual here, Lorna Rossbacker, is fairly low. reason for that is Lorna used to be an area service manager and uh, she still works for me, but she looks after a specialized team. So Lorna's still in the report. In my previous um, system, I would have had to send uh, an IT change request and, and ask Lorna to be removed and they would have come back with a cost and you know, it might have been six weeks. And all while that's happening, you know, there could be potentially customers at the end going, okay, uh, uh, where, where's my call? Lorna's going, I, I don't work for your section anymore, Mark. So what you can easily do in ServiceMax is that, that's put that into the report. If you just go into Customize, okay, you go into, I'm just going to add a filter. I'm just going to type, start typing in Technician, and it gives you a list. Technicians manager's email, not equal to, and then all I need to do is put Lorna's email address in. If we OK that, we just save that. As you can see, it's, it's now saving. Okay, just need to go back into my dashboards. These are all my drop-down dashboards that um, anyone can look at. Okay, while that's refreshing, you can see all my other dashboards here. So here, 
that's all my engineers, that's first time fix for the month all the way down. And what my managers use, they have a, a, a dumbed down version. So you know, my area service manager who looks after the north of the UK, he would have exactly the same dashboard and he would just have his managers reporting. So laundry is no longer there. That, that's how powerful it is. Um, if I had a new manager that joins me, all I need to do is once they're set up on Service Max, I do exactly as you've just seen me, but I add them in. So that took literally, you know, four or five minutes, where before it would take potentially four or five weeks for that to happen. The next bas my next dashboard I use is uh, is my trending dashboard. So you can see here, these are my national calls. So we went live on 23rd of July 2012, and you can see the the months at the bottom and you can see the lines, so the blue line is my repairs, um, yellow line is other, um, which is um, everything outside of the repair, the install, preventative maintenance and meter inspections. And again, you can just go into the report and then you can have a look at some of the data and some of the reports behind it. And you can start to manipulate those reports uh, as, as much as you want. Um, you can change date range or anything at all like that. So you can see, this is now the report, and totally is just over uh, well, nearly 21,000 repairs um, that the UK, Pitney Bowes UK service engineers have done since we went live on the 23rd of July. And it breaks it down. And then um, you can just start changing the date range here. So you just, it's just as easy as just, it, it's, a, it's like a website. You know, you just click back. Now you've got here national absence trend. So what that's showing us, you can see the blue line. So these are these pre-booked holidays by my engineers. So I know in August, everybody knows it's a busy time for holidays. I know that's where my peak is. So I'm not going to start booking in large installations or, or large uh, refurbishments because I know what's happening in the future. Um, the, the, the green line, as you can see, um, is sick. I've got um, a couple of people on the long-term sick, and you can start to track that. You you know what's ahead of you. You don't need to, um, you know, keep constantly ringing them up because you you know exactly what is going on. So, puts you into the report. So, if uh, my director came to me and said, you know, Mark, how many days training have you had in 2012? All I do, I click, I go to my current year, and then I just press run report. And there is the total. So it starts in January up until December. So, so far, I've got, I've had 315 working days in training. And the great thing about this is you can then export it. So you can export into Excel, and it just literally puts into Excel it puts your filters in and you can start really having a look at what you want to do. Some managers just use Service Max all the time, but if you want to start looking and filtering, um, you can actually just export it straight into Excel. So my next dashboard is uh, what I call uh, my call avoid. So it's just a dashboard. It's all about call avoid. Pitney Bowes, um, we do a lot of call avoiding over the phone. So that's from the contact center, which is first and second tier, and also by the field. Um, we found our customers would rather have the maximum uptime than wait for an engineer to come along. So again, all products call avoid by the field. The majority of these are by our contact center, but you can start to have a look at the trends. So you know, in April was really, really good. So what we'll do in May is we'll, we'll look into May and understand why we've had a drop. Again, if you put that into Excel, you can look at all the engineers' comments. And then further down, you can have a look at call avoid by product. So what are we good at? So there's all my products there, and it, you can segment it out, and it gives you the percentage, and it gives you um, the, actual, the actual value of it. And you can then start, you can, you can start to change the way the graphs look. You don't have to have a pie chart, so you can have a bar chart, um, you can have a speckled chart, whatever you're comfortable with. 
another dashboard is my financial dashboard and I, uh, I look at this one here in particular this is where the engineer has physically forced non-billing so the engineer has been told it's on contract it's gone out to the customer and he decides that customer makes him a nice cup of coffee gives him a sticky bun and he's not going to charge that customer and he, ha he physically has to force non-bill it via his iPad as soon as that happens my managers get a ping of an email it doesn't mean the customer is not going to be charged what it does mean is the manager can have a conversation with the engineer and ask those questions of why um, he hasn't charged them likewise it also captures where the customer rings into our contact center and the contact center says, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to send the engineer out to you free of charge. It's only a recommendation. doesn't mean the customer is not going to be charged. But it basically highlights to the manager that we're potentially going to be losing revenue. And it's, it's, all, it's all done very neatly via email. And again, the, the, my managers can go into their iPad and they can start to look at this and drill into some of the data whether they want to do it at the beginning of the month or halfway through the month and here's just a, here's just a report and I'm just going to go over to the right okay it says there is billable and it's been ticked okay so basically this engineers here have forced non build it so that information will go to the manager and my final dashboard um, is uh, it's a European dashboard so you can see the countries at the bottom and you can start to do some direct comparison so across Europe this is our first time fix so all our products all rolled up to one all our engineers um, will actually just start to show you what our European first time fix is and you can start to have those intelligent conversations between you know each country so there's the report so Denmark is 89.69 United Kingdom is 66.87 now you know I'm talking to lots of service people on the on, on the call and industry standards could be what 86 87 percent when you drill into United Kingdom you can actually see why we're actually at 66%, and that's ju that's just the way that some of the engineers have been closing it when they've been doing call of void. In my previous system, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to answer that question. But in Service Max, you can just dump this information, and you can start to manipulate it and understand why that's happening. So we'll just go back to my last one, and we talked about. Um, earlier average repair time so again what we do is average installation time mean time to install and mean time to repair across Europe so Ian Hubbard my service di my European service director um, he has this and he, he can start just to look at a very very high level you know, he doesn't you know he doesn't want to go into all this detail that's why he employs managers to do it but he can actually see some peaks um, and, and, and some troughs so guys this is um you know I hope it's been of interest to you um I, I absolutely recommend service match for, from a, from a manager's point of view it gives you a very high level um view of what's going on in your business so thanks very much for listening and I'm going to hand back over to uh Vidya Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, I think I now understand why your last name is King. It's, you're the king of dashboards. I mean, look at that. Your dashboards and the way you run your service business is awesome. I, I think you're also wearing the I Love Service Max t-shirt and sitting on a webinar. Just to let you know folks can see you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so um, I, uh, this, this slide, folks, is just to talk about at the highest level, give you a flavor of other functionality within Service Max. At the very core is our install base and uh, entitlement capabilities where you can track your customer's equipment. At a very detailed component level, um, you can, you can, you, the service contract and the service plan capabilities are very intense and detailed. We launched a few um, uh, amazing functionality in the last few releases around contracts. Scheduling is, um, again, 
everything to do with all kinds of uh, scheduling, manual, dispatch console based, advanced scheduling. You can also take it all the way to automated scheduling with uh, Optimax, which is our workforce optimization uh, module. And in parts, parts is so detailed, uh, I always say we can track them wherever you stash them. So service parts and reverse logistics. Uh, reverse logistics was launched um, a couple of releases ago. It's very detailed. We've got customers tracking uh, parts and repairs and returns uh, throughout the entire service uh, uh, chain, uh, logistical chain, and uh, uh, depot repair is a part of that strategy as well. We've got social, and I know um, Mark touched a little bit on the, on the social aspect. I have a slide on that, so I'll, I'll skip through this particular bubble here. Um, then we've got portals. Uh, you can give access to your customers and your partners uh, to have visibility into certain elements of your business that you make visible to them. So they have access to information using a portal. You're just creating another entry point for your customers. You're giving another, um, another channel to have visibility into, to, for partners to have visibility into your business and vice versa. Um, next slide, please. The next three slides I want to talk about the, the SOMO cloth trend, uh, this being the MO, which is mobile. Um, Service Max is, we, we have a cutting edge mobile solution just to ensure that critical service information of any kind, any customer data, is always available at fingertips no matter where and when you, uh, where, uh, where you are and when you want it. Uh, our mobile solution is, uh, we've got smartphones, laptops, and the offline capability. Uh, we have an award-winning iPad app and so on. This is all around mobile. Um, ours is an HTML5 based solution, which means you can, you can also have um, I install a BYOD strategy uh, within your organization. And depending on which uh, device they have, they are comfortable with, the technicians can bring that device to work. Next slide, please. By the way, um, the, the slides are being advanced by Mark King. Our customer is truly the king, and they have access and control over most of the stuff, including my slide deck. Um, so that's why I have to ask him to, uh, to advance my slides. Anyways, this is the social part of our offering. Uh, we have three kind of uh, sub-modules. Service Pulse is around collaboration, where you empower your field technician with the knowledge of the entire organization. So he's never the lone wolf in the field. Um, for us, social is not about, it's not Facebook for work, right? It's not uh, talking about what you did for Memorial Day or, or post pictures of your dog, but it is truly about delighting your customers. It's about documenting, and I think uh, Mark mentioned about storing comments and data and reducing the email thread and, and not worrying about whether you forgot to include someone in an email and whether they've received it, they've read it or not. Everything is, is posted to a wider community and the tribal knowledge kind of is leveraged by the entire organization. Uh, product policy is a very uh, interesting piece as well. This is about machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication and uh, remote device monitoring. That's an important part of our social offering as well. Next slide, please. This is, this is uh, just to say that ours is a 100% cloud solution which is built natively on force.com from salesforce.com. And um, we extend the service cloud from salesforce.com into field service and we, we kind of complete the solution uh, from salesforce.com. For those of you who are familiar with uh, uh, salesforce.com, but primarily we are built on the force.com platform. And um, you can see, as, as, as Mark showed you in the demonstration, you, so those of you who are familiar with Salesforce.com would see that it's the same screens, except um, it, it's relevant and the objects and, uh, and the screens are relevant to ServiceMax. Next screen, please. Um, finally, we at ServiceMax, um, we imagine flawless field service being offered by our customers to their clients and customers. Um, it's about uh, eliminating inefficiencies and driving growth and solving customer issues, sometimes even before they know that they have a problem. 
At ServiceMax, our mission is to help customers deliver the best field service ever uh, to, to, to your customers. And uh, um, we do that, thereby we, we help you delight your customers, maximize service uh, revenue, and perfect the entire service delivery chain. Uh, next slide, which is my, my, my last slide, um, second last actually. This is just to tell you we surveyed our customers about a couple of months ago and such great phenomenal results, uh, the ROI that our customers are seeing, uh, just this helps us assess the true impact of our uh, solution that customers are seeing. Just to call out one number, a 14% increase in service revenue. Uh, really strong numbers, um, and, and that's the, the rest of it is on the slide. In the interest of time, uh, Mark, let's go to our my last slide. I just want to urge you guys to take the time to go to servicemax.com. Uh, we just launched a brand new website. Uh, we and our customers are super psyched about it. So go uh, look at our new website. It's got tons of content, all refreshed, brand new stuff. You can do your own ROI analysis. You can look at the tons of customer testimonials and videos we have, lots of white papers. Um, we have an upcoming event, which is the, the ServiceMax annual conference, which is called Maximize. It's happening in October. We'd love to have you guys there. More information on that at, uh, on our website. Uh, with that, I think we should leave the last 10 minutes for questions and answers. Uh, Mark, if you go to the next slide, um, let's let, just thank you everyone for, uh, for patiently listening to us and you can post your questions on the chat um, uh, panel and uh, Nicole Sanders who is the director of, uh, of demand gen here at ServiceMax is going to moderate the next, uh, next Q&A session. Okay, great. So you should have access to a questions panel within GoToWebinar and that's where you can submit your questions. Uh, we already have some that have come in, and so I'll go ahead and um, uh, start asking away. But go ahead and submit your questions even as we're addressing these. And I think um, this is a question that, um, Vidya, I'll, I'll ask of you first, and then Mark, you'll probably have a, a follow-on. Um, are there any dashboards on service agreements and revenue? For example, which customers have which contract types, missed opportunities, et cetera? Sure. So um, I think this is a good question for Mark and me. You know how Mark spoke about uh, all his dashboards are his dashboards and that he built it for himself. He, he didn't want uh, to use other dashboards. That's, uh, that's like the next level. But at the get-go, um, ServiceMax provides, um, you know, uh, out-of-the-box reports and dashboards. And I'm just looking at the, at the list here. So we've got... Um, install based warranty and service contracts dashboard, dashboard which has charts showing installed product distribution, um, warranty and service maintenance, um, maintenance contracts, performance information. We've got reports on uh, the active service contract. Uh, it can be grouped by service levels. We've got um, you know service contracts which are coming up for renewal and so on. So absolutely, we've got uh, lots of uh, out of the box stuff as well. And Mark, if you want to add to that, please feel free. Um, uh, yeah, it was a great question. Um, uh, with it, within my dashboards, I, I do have data on um, all the products that are what I call, call chargeables. So they haven't got a contract. Um, and then you can segment out to um, different levels. So we, we in, in, uh, in Pitney Bowes in the UK, we have uh, four, six, eight, and 12-hour responses. Um, and you can then start to use those dashboards and you can start to clone them um, so then you can start looking at your missed SLAs and your average repair time and your average response times as well. So you know I, I use this a lot. It's if it's in service max you can report on it. Hope that answered the question. Yeah great. Okay, there are two um, questions I'll, I'll ask and I think they're directly to you Mark. It says how do you enter the sick training sick training and holiday time into the system and how do you define and capture the initial response time? 
Um, to, to book engineers off the system to capture that is um, it's basically done from the from the service max portal um, so we have um, the engineers use the iPads where other people have a have a portal so they're actually able to book the engineers off we we in the UK do not allow engineers to book their own holiday or sick or training um, for obvious reasons some, some other countries do so the portal actually books the engineer off that flags it within service max um, sorry, what was what was the other question? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank sorry, you. There's, so there's, there was another part of the question. Sorry, I missed that. Oh, how do you define and capture the initial response time? Um, when the, w w the the engineer will get the the call. So, for for an example, customer will ring in at twelve o'clock midday, and that call will automatically um, go to the engineer based on his availability, based on his skill and based on his postcodes. When the engineer receives that, he acknowledges it so we can track how quick did he take to acknowledge the call. Then he goes into transit so we can track that. We know exactly um, when he st started to, to travel. And then when he gets on site, that's the response time that we measure. So if he gets on site at 3 o'clock, his response time for that customer is 3 hours. Um, if he gets there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, um, it will it will flag it as a missed response time. It, 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 so it will give us five hours, and he's missed it by an hour. Okay, perfect. Um, there are a couple questions, and I'll kind of group them together. It has to do with um, the integration to SAP, ServiceMax to SAP, and if you can talk about how often the software interacts with SAP, and just um, any uh, challenges that were overcome. Um, that you that you encountered while implementing. Okay, um, we used Service Max to cleanse our data. Um, what Service Max gave us the opportunity to do is, uh, and uh, um, it was a great question. I hope the person who who, are, who asked that um, knows a lot about SAP. SAP will hold everything. You know, going back to 1924, um, and what Service Max gave us, it gave us the ability to to transfer over all those records that are active, on contract, not on contract, and um, we actually used it as an advantage. Um, we had, after, when we went live, um, I think that the cleansed data was something like 98.5% cleansed. Um, with our old system, it, it, I couldn't even put a number on it. Um, we actually didn't encounter any major problems from, from SAP into, into ServiceMax. So you know, we, we use it to our advantage, if, if I'm honest. Okay, great, good. <laughs> um, another very specific question uh, to you, Mark. What did you mean by call avoid? Um, okay, Cus customer rings in and says, uh, "My machine is not connecting." Um, the the front agent will talk to that customer through. Um, what we call our knowledge base. So, have you got the machine turned on, Mr. Customer? Okay, and what I'm going to do is talk you through um, some simple steps um, to see if you get connected. If that doesn't work, it automatically goes to the engineer as a field repair. The engineer then can then ring the customer, introduce himself, hi, you know, hi, Vidya, it's Mark, I'm your local engineer, I understand you've got some problems, can I have a quick chat to see if I can resolve it over the phone before I come out to you? So that's that's call avoid. So call avoid for me is preventing an engineer going out to a customer and the machine is now working. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, this one is quite interesting. I think you'll be able to talk to this. <laughs> Appreciate this question. Um, this person comments, it's great to have self-serve dashboard functionality, but is it possible for an administrator or IT analyst to provide a dashboard template um, that they'd like all managers to start from? Or if one um, manager comes up with a good uh, dashboard, can they share it out as a template for other users? Absolutely. Um, on, the, on the 23rd of July, um, well, before the 23rd of July, we basically, and I say we, me and my service manager sat in a classroom for two hours and um, we had a service max guru who, who did some training with us. Then the following day, I sat in a room with my managers and said, what do we want to measure? As a group, what, we want to, what do we want to measure? And literally, four hours later, every single one of my managers had the same dashboard, and 
you can start to use each other's dashboards. You can clone, you can save as. Um, so to answer your question is yes, anyone who's got access to ServiceMax, whether they're IT, back office, service director, can actually have a standardized dashboard. And people, you know, my European colleagues who, who came onto ServiceMax later than me have um, nicked, stolen, um, used my dashboards, because my dashboards are open. I don't hide my dashboard, so yes, you, you can have a standard dashboard suite and anyone and everyone can start to use them. Okay. You know, you know Mark, it would be great if you could uh, you know, just show us how to make a copy of the dashboard, but in the interest of time, we'll take two other questions and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, the question or comment is, you stated this is linked to Salesforce. Um, how difficult is it to bridge to that CRM? Is that a question for me or, or, or video? Yeah, I mean, either one of you can, can take it just about. Yeah, this is... It I, seems I, obvious to yeah, us, but yeah. we'll address it. <laughs> exactly. And, and Mark, maybe you can take a shot too. The, the fact sure. that Salesforce or ServiceMax is based on Force.com, uh, we we take advantage of all the features and the functionality that comes from the platform, and and, and so there's no bridge. It's it's we are we are force.com. We are on force.com. So it's kind of it, it's in our DNA. So if you want to extend on that a little bit, it's up to you. Um, yeah, I, I'll just quickly answer. I'll, I'll, I'll give you um I'll give you a live example. Is my my, my engineers um. Often come along, uh, come off to, come along often um, uh, new opportunities. So they'll go out to a, a, a small machine and it's, it's old, and the customer's talking to the engineer. And the engineer says to the customer, "Look, you know, we do a great, fantastic product. You know, do you want me to get with someone to, to give you a ring?" What they do on their iPad is they actually click the button to say, "I'm going to put a service lead in." So that interfaces with Salesforce. So even though it's on Service Max, and I can pull a report on Service Max to say, "Hey, you know, Mark King, he's put in, you know." 10 service lead opportunities this month. I can also pull exactly the same report in Salesforce to say Salesforce has now got additional 10 opportunities from service. So for me, it's 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 one it's just one system. Hope that answered the question. Yes. Okay. And uh, it is the top of the hour, but there's uh, just a slew of questions coming in. Um, I thought we could end on this one and then. Um, for anybody else who's still on the line and has submitted questions, we'll make sure that we um, get those uh, answered here in the next 24 to 48 hours and get back to you. So um, the last one is, what key business measures or improvements did uh, Pitney Bowes realize with ServiceMax? Um, it was, um, we stopped our revenue leaking out the bottom of the bucket, if I, if I can be frank about it. Um, our old system... Um, would basically allow the engineer to do what they wanted. It would allow the engineer to bill a customer when they shouldn't have been. So therefore, you know, we've recognized the revenue and then the following month we have to give them a credit note. One, that upsets the customer and two, it completely mucks up my P&L. Um, it also um, allows, uh, it, it stops the engineer giving away free charge revenue. You know, the engineers have empowerment to do that, but we can stop it at any, at any moment in time just by using flags and uh, emails. Awesome. Hey, Mark, I mean, you are the hero of the show. Look at the, the, the questions are not ending. Uh, and and, and for, for folks, you can see Mark's email ID on the screen. It's mark.king at, uh, at pb.com. So, and he's gracefully agreed to, um, to answer your questions. So if you can, if you want, you can send him um, questions directly and uh, Mark is that okay with you? Uh, uh, is now. Yes, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you so much for your time everyone um, for, uh, for uh, and Mark especially you for, for the presentation and, and, and for your uh, for the demonstration. I uh, hope it was a good one for you as well.